The function buttons are on the very front of your machine and I want to walk you through how important each of these are and what they do. So for example, we'll just start at the beginning here where we have speed plus or minus. Now when I push this on the screen is a little pop-up menu and I'll show you what the speed is and as I've reduced it down you'll find that it will slow at a, so at a very slow speed like that's my maximum speed and that's nice if you've got somebody that is new to sewing using this or if you're using the next function button which is the start stop button. Now in the sewing mode that means that you do not have to touch the foot control when um, to make the machine go. You just need to use this as your stop and start. And having the speed reduced is a nice way to kind of control that so you're not running away. And you can increase it or decrease it as you are sewing down the middle of your area. Now, the selective thread cutter, the scissors, whenever you push it on demand, it's going to stop cut the thread. So what it does is it cuts the thread, it pulls the two threads to the back side and it trims it so it's wonderful. So anytime you want the foot to or the, the thread to be trimmed and the foot to lift, use the selective thread cutter. We also have the needle stop up and down. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm stepping on my foot control. The foot automatically goes down for me. Starts with the locking stitches. Love that. Now, right now, the needle's always stopping up. So if you'd like the needle to stop in the fabric, push the needle stop up down function button, and the needle will now stop down in the fabric every single time. But it does one other thing. It puts the foot into a pivot position. So every time you stop to sew, it lifts it a, just a hair, allowing you to turn that fabric very easily. I'm gonna go ahead and put my speed just a little bit higher here. There we go. Okay, so when you're done, if you come back to the selective thread cutter, it will put the foot back down, cut the thread, and then lift it fully so you can pull that right on out. So, but that needle down feature is still on, and next time you start to sew, it will stop back down in the fabric. Now, the last one on this top row is what is called stitch restart. So if I'm doing a decorative stitch, I'm gonna just reach over, we'll pick a stitch that has some Kind of a little start to it. Okay, so it's gonna go ahead and just start a, a decorative stitch. And sometimes when you sew a decorative stitch, you go ahead and you're just sewing a row and it doesn't matter where you stop. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here. Now you're gonna notice that I'm halfway in the stitch. So if I start again, it's gonna start right where I left off. But I, if I go ahead and touch the stitch restart button, it will put it back to the beginning of the stitch and now begin like it was right at the beginning. So it's a great feature for that. Now instead of stopping in the middle, that's what the next button is. It's for stop. So what I'm gonna do is as I sew this same little decorative stitch here, we'll go ahead and stitch. But if I push stop, what it does is lets the machine sew right to the end of that decorative stitch and stop for me. I'm gonna to touch the selective thread cutter and I'll cut. So now I have just two repeats sewn, but I didn't have to guess where to take my foot off the foot control. The machine actually does that particular part there. Okay, so the next two we're gonna talk about are the ones with the picture of the presser foot. It is a sensor foot up an extra lift and the sensor foot down and pivot. So yes, I have been just stepping on my foot control and the foot automatically just goes down on my fabric. I love that feature. And if I just kind of tap it, the foot goes down, but the needle doesn't take its first stitch. Sometimes I don't get my foot and fabric lined up. So I can go ahead and lift it back up and move it to where I want to be. And then I can lower it manually. Oh gosh, I didn't get it exactly lined up to the edge maybe. If you touch the sensor foot down button again, it puts it in what's called a pivot position. Just raise it up a little bit, not all the way. And then you can move the fabric left or right, up or down. And then when you start to sew, it will put that foot back on the fabric ready to be. Or you could push it down and let that foot sit on the fabric. Oh, we're still sewing that decorative stitch, no problem. We'll just do a straight stitch now. And so one thing nice is, let's say we are done. I'm gonna use the selective thread cutter. So the fabric is gonna be, or the foot's gonna lift up. This is the normal lift. I can barely put my fingers underneath. And sometimes I have a very thick piece of fabric. If you touch the sensor foot up an extra lift, it will do just that. Watch how much higher it lifts. It goes all the way up and it also lowers the feed dogs. So now without any trouble, I can slide all my fingers underneath and if I had a really thick piece of fabric, I can get that 
squished in there. And I could even then manually lower the foot down as it's ready to stitch. So remember, both of these have two options depending on what it, it does the first time you touch it and what it can do the second time we touch it. The last button is the fix button. You'll notice because we used the selective spread cutter last, it is on. That's gonna take those little locking stitches at the beginning each time. Now, if I go ahead and just touch the fix button, it will do locking stitches and it'll take off again. Well, what if you wanted those locking stitches to be right at the end? Touch fix and it will lock it and stop sewing, kind of like how um, the stop button did, but it does it with a locking stitch. Now, what if you wanted to actually have it lock and cut, then touch the selective thread cutter while you are sewing and it will do everything. It will lock it, cut it, and lift the foot up all at once. So some of these features have multiple uses and I do recommend you trying them out. Try it by pushing it while you're sewing and try it by pushing it while you're stopped and then start up again. Uh, your book does clarify each of these things and the function buttons have other uses when we get over to embroidery. So we'll revisit what some of these buttons do differently when we have the embroidery unit and hoop on.